hopefully everyone is doing well. I got a few emails just now that I'm trying to cipher through to get people the link that are looking for the link. So I sent them to the website. Anyways, um, yeah, it's always kind of a little crazy behind the scenes on the Zoom. So um, I know that we need to be careful of time because I think it's going to take us a good amount of time to get through our incredible year we all had. Um, so I'm going to go through some slides. I'm going to um, give myself a little overview and then overview of you know what we accomplished this year, hear from the chairs, um, look at um, certifying our election, our ballot, and um, kind of move on through. So I guess I should start because I do believe that we may have some people who are new that are just hopping on for the first time. So my name is Dr. Laura Richardson. I currently serve for the next few minutes anyways, as uh, the president of the Clinical Exercise Physiology Association. And um, I will show you our agenda for the next few minutes that we have together. Uh, my plan is um, to give a little bit of reflection over what we've done this year, prepare the transition as we have new leaders that are here on the call that will be stepping into new positions. I'll hear some reports from uh, the treasurer, Tim, our treasurer, different chairs of our committees, as well as, um, again, certifying the election ballot and welcoming in our new leaders that will be here. So um, let me start, let me just check the chat here. Okay, getting a few uh, private chats. Okay, so let's, so this is our agenda and all the uh, committee chairs, we're gonna do our best to keep um, each of our updates as you know, a short and sweet, but still have some good content in there as we can to fit everything into uh, the allotted time that we have to be cognizant of everyone's time. So I just wanna start, we've been really busy uh, this past year. We have our usual standing committees. We also have ad hoc committees. I have up here a QR code because one of the big things that happened in the last couple of months was the publication of the salary survey. So what happens is, um, CEPA every five years since, um, you know, this is the third time we've done it, 15 years later, every five years has collected a survey. I think many of you here on the call participated in, um, uh, in, in the survey, so I thank you. But if you haven't yet read the um, results to take a look at trends and changes in the profession, please do so. Um, that, again, this was just published a couple of months ago in our own JSEP journal. Aside from getting this ad hoc committee, um, getting this survey analyzed and published, I think I'm going to go through a few other items. And one of the big things that I set for a goal for myself last year was really improving awareness of who CEPA is. It's always amazing when you go to the national ACSM meeting that people don't always know we exist. So we've spent, I've spent a lot of time working with the marketing committee. Um, trying to just increase awareness for who, who we are as an organization, as well as on social media. And I'll tell you that our followers have tripled in the past year, which is a great thing. I think as our awareness of who we are has grown, also the exam credential has grown. So um, new young professionals, new students taking the CEP exam. So that's a lot, all, all awareness for the profession. That's something that I think we're going to continue working on and um, a really important thing to share with you. I also set a goal for myself this past year um, to take a look at who we are um, and who we are primarily those um, those people with the credentials are 64 percent are females and from data out of our salary survey predominantly white. So looking at diversity, equity, inclusion issues is something that is um, kind of a new initiative. And if any of you attended the ACSM um, annual meeting last week, myself and a group of past presidents presented um, the beginnings of what we hope to continue to really beef up and um, understand what we need to be doing better to help under help our profession um, best represent who we want to be serving with um, uh, 
ethnicities and race and underrepresented practitioners. So that that's a um, beginning and I hope to continue in my role as I move into the past president position. We've also it, um, instituted some new member incentives. So uh, many of you are aware that that was something else that we set one year ago, a goal to figure out how to, why are we members? Why do we renew our members? And one of the big things that we had um, over this year is wanting to advocate for member incentives such as reduced registration fees at our virtual conference. We offered free webinars. Um, so many incentives to say, uh, student incentives as well as for students who are gonna be members, um, having more incentives for why you would wanna renew your memberships. We uh, began our new job share, which we got, received very great feedback. So on all our social media platforms, you'll hear more about all of these reviews when we get to the committee chairs. But I think that the job share and the employment outlook is something that we've been able to do relatively easily and receive very nice feedback on that. When we take a look at um, uh, who we are with ACSM, that's also been a focus of, of myself and the others that serve on our presidential board, which is strengthen our, strengthening our relationship with ACSM. So collaborative discussions with the leadership, with um, the CEO, Kristen Bellinson and her great group on increasing initiatives of how we CEPA can work in unison with ACSM for awareness of who is the CEP, who are we in the workforce. This is happening um, at kind of ground level with a lot of our CEPA members serving on the task force. So the ACSM task force has great momentum that's collectively trying to um, build recognition for the qualified healthcare provider. So that's the QHP. Um, so that task force and our relationship with ACSM has really forged some great small projects and initiatives that um, ha has been very fruit fruit fruitful this year, past year together. Um, in addition with ACSM and our work towards um, reimbursement and, and, and recognition of, as a QHP that's ongoing, we will continue to keep our members abreast of what happens um, in, in the course of the next year with um, ongoing projects. We also during this year have um, renewed our strategic partners with um, ESSA, which is the Australian group and um, the Canadian group, which, which is CSCP and Another good news on the international partnership is BASIS. So BASIS is the British Association of Sport and Exercise Sciences. So these are a lot of acronyms I'm throwing out at you. But what I'm saying is that during this year behind the scenes, CEPA strategically aligning ourselves with other international organizations that are um, recognizing the clinical exercise physiologists. So we've renewed with the Australians we, um, and the Canadians and just waiting on finalizing um, with ACSM the affiliation with um, the British group, which I think is really great information to share with you. So these are just, you know, some um, small things I know, I know myself, I'm excited to share with you. Additionally, our website has launched kind of a, a little bit of a new um, footprint. So we have an e-learning module now that just got launched in March. So this is under, once you log in as a member, under member resources, it provides the ability for asynchronous learning. And these are approved ACSM CEC um, credits, and you will see the growth of our e-learning platform increasing as we do more webinars and we have more recordings that this is an option for uh, members to get their CECs um, on, on your own time, you know, what works for you. We also have our ongoing discussion forums, so please jump on there and we can also link um, if you have good discussion forums you want to use on our website into our social media platforms. It's a great place for our members to interact with fellow CEPs and um, you can post and share and get into dialogue. An ongoing um, new project that we hope to really get off and moving is our internship directory. That's going to be housed within our website. It hopefully is going to look different and have a little bit more easier usability, but that's a project that is on the forefront to help our CEPs find clinical placement and have more of a kind of an organic update that's gonna be able to happen on the website. Uh, partnerships, we um, have ongoing partnerships available. So we have opportunities for partnerships 
for, we are currently accepting any inquiries you may have for educational institutions, companies that may want a partnership and what that, what happens with a partnership is it's marketing really. We get to have a collaboration and very reciprocal relationship. So we have partnerships. If you're interested in using, um, advertising your educational institution, or again, a company you may work for, please reach out and we will work with you. You can either let myself know or Wanda and we can get the information. Any members who are looking to get involved in CPA, this is a place that we would love to have a little more manpower. So I will in a little bit um, share when I'm done here with my slides, share uh, the link if you want to do the volunteering form. The other thing I just want to do a little shout out to is the exercises medicine. Um, I, myself, uh, another member, Brian Coyne, I think 35 other subject members have been really active with working alongside ACSM in streamlining their new EIM credential. So we will be sharing what this new credential is going to look like with our members in the next couple of weeks. It's going to go live on June 15th. So um, watch your inbox for uh, the, the new launch of the EIM. And again, volunteering, we are always open for volunteers, anyone who's new to the organization or would like to simply get more involved. We can find room for you on um, on one of our committees. The other thing that's been going on behind the scenes, you may have seen some of this on our social media platforms, is we've partnered with, with two different publishers to endorse um, very high quality uh, textbooks that help not only with uh, studying for those that are studying for the CEP credential, but even for those of us active in the field as practitioners. So you uh, may have received or you should have received already the discount code for the human kinetics textbook um, that's on the left of your screen and on the right soon to be released, not, not quite yet ready to release the discount code, but will be the Wolters and Kohler um, clinical exercise physiology textbook. So we have endorsed these two and we're excited to work with two different publishers to help support quality information that's um, being released. The other big thing I want to share with you is our annual conference. So many of you probably attended. I, we had record attendance at our last virtual conference that was held last year, and it was chaired by past president, previous president, Sam Headley. Sam did an incredible job hosting an international conference on COVID, it was very, very well received. Um, so we shout out to um, Sam for all of his hard work and the committee members that worked. I wanna now also update all of you to save the date. Our upcoming conference, we're shifting the timeline and we will now to try to help avoid the busy fall semester that um, we had been doing a fall conference. We are shifting this after a lot of discussion and conversation. Um, our CEPA conference will continue to be held virtually because we're able to now host internationally and reach a broader um, attendee. Um, audience. So it will be held in February on February 11th. Please save the date. Um, good news that's coming with this is that we will for the first time be collaborating with the journal JSEP, the Journal of Clinical Exercise Physiology. This will be the first time that the journal is offering a published supplement, supplemental edition that will have our abstracts that are accepted for the conference. So this is exciting for the journal. It's very exciting for those of us, those of you that are interested in presenting to also not only get a presentation, but also have your abstract published. The conference um, is taking on a little bit of a different format where it will be chaired by the past president, lucky for me, that will now be myself, and co-chaired by um, the current or the soon to be president, which is um, Jamal. And we hope to maintain this framework to help with momentum with, um, you know, with past president and current president as well as the list of committee members names you see. So you will in the next month or so be receiving a lot of information, social media in your inbox with a call for um, abstracts, um, information about the conference, some of our keynote speakers we're going to be releasing very soon. So um, please know that this is in the works and I'm really excited about this. So um, you know, I know I speak way too fast and I know I always speak too fast. I have way too much energy, but a lot of good stuff was happening behind the scenes. Um, and I am really excited to now pass the microphone over to our chairs who I want um, them to also have time to um, give you more uh, robust overviews. So I'm gonna 
mute myself and let our treasurer, Tim, take the stage as he gives us the overview of our budget. So Tim, hop on over. Okay, we are going to pause because I'm looking for Tim. I don't see him on here. We are going to rotate over. I'm going to move it over to Mary, and I'm going to come back to Tim because he's got a lot of good information here from the treasurer position. And um, so let me just fast forward the slides, and I'm going to get Mary, who is our membership. Okay, I see Mary on the call. Mary, can you just unmute yourself? There we go. Is that better? Yep, got it, thanks. Wonderful, thank you so much, Laura, and, and hello, everyone. Um, so some member accomplishments. So to the right here, we have our goals and objectives. And I would say the biggest thing for membership this past year was getting more organized and really setting key goals for ourselves and then really striving to accomplish some objectives. Um, with that said, um, we had a lot of um, committee members on our on our committee, um, but then we really were trying to focus on, you know, how do we tackle all of this? And so there was a lot of idea generation, and I would say that's the biggest accomplishment that came about through membership was really getting an understanding of how do we want to look at membership, especially as um, membership has changed over the past several years, um, and what you know the CEP. Um, potential members are, are looking for. We've done a lot of discussion and brainstorming on how do we really drive membership. And so really focusing on our goals and, and thinking strategically, I would say is our biggest accomplishment. Um, and so one, you know, the top um, goal that of course we have and um, as our initiative was increasing the membership benefits. And so a lot of the ideas that we generated in our membership committee um, you know, did go to the executive committee and there were some great initiatives um, that took place. So one of them being, um, it led to reduced annual um, conference registration for members. We generated um, some free student conference registrations and CEP met, uh, webinars. Um, and then certainly we we're thinking a lot about how to leverage the talent of our current professionals um, within the CEPA. And so there's a new member spotlight um, that was announced in the recent newsletter and now embedded on our website. And so really we found that one of the great ways to um, get people to learn more about the CEPA and want to be a part of our membership is by learning about all of the great jobs and um, places that CEPAs actually work. And so um, we're excited to create that spotlight to be able to showcase CEPA professionals and where they work, what they do, and have some faces behind um, the jobs within the industry. And so those were some accomplishments um, that we focused on in this past year. Great, um, thank you. And here are here is the list of um, those on the membership committee. Um, so thank you to all of those. Um, and here are the numbers. Thank you, Mary. So I'm um, excited to see the increase in, um, uh, in membership. Um, and I think that's only just going to continue to grow. Um, the next on the list is Webb with the journal. Great, thanks. Um, can, it, let's see, let's advance the next slide. <clears throat> um, so we, we've had uh, several areas of focus uh, over the last couple of, couple of years. And uh, you know, uh, those included like expanding our readers, readership, making progress towards indexing, um, advancing our website a bit, and then developing some additional content. Um, I guess, Laura, next slide. So the first area I'll talk about is uh, our readership. So this is expanded over the um, over the year. I think, yeah, back one. We, we're now um, between expansion of through partnership with uh, ESSA and the Canadian Society of Exercise Physiologists, we, we now are, and, and institutional um, 
subscriptions, we're now over to, to available to over 20,000 exercise physiologists and scientists uh, worldwide. I think, you know, we've, we've really uh, expanded tremendously internationally. Um, we do have those institutional subscribers which now have access. We've extended that to a number of, of international institutions and have a couple of others that are interested that we're, uh, you know, working towards um, making it available. We are, we've also laid the groundwork. Um, we have not fully launched, but we're able to, um, we're, we're, we're moving towards being able to offer and support individual subscribers and article requests. Um, however, you know, that, that we didn't quite get done this last year, but we did make some progress as far as uh, with how to make that available. Um, our, our journal site has been um, updated and expanded quite a bit. You know, we've had a few, a few bumps in the road with this um, where we've had some downtime was they were updating particularly some security things here recently, but um, the, the, the back end part of the journal, uh, which is, is not the fun part, right? Like no one gets to see those pieces of it, but the back end part of the journal is, has been tremendously improved, gives us lots more uh, features, especially some of these security features um, with, with things, some of the international things going on now. Um, there, there were a whole bunch of uh, additional uh, security features that need to be added to add extra layers of protection. And we've also, you know, updated and had some had some formatting changes, which have been exciting over this over this last year. And I, I expect that we'll have some more things that are available uh, coming up. Next slide, please. Um, indexing has been an interesting one this year. Uh, we've we we made some progress, so this has been a you know a long term project that was originally sum submitted in 2019. There were considerable COVID related delays to this, um, but we're currently under uh, review for full indexing uh, with the uh, with the Web of Science and, and others. This is this revealed a couple of really significant issues with how the journal was set up and and particularly some of the publisher information. Um, and so that's been for the last few months, we've spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, back and forth getting our publisher information updated so that it would reflect that CPA is a publisher, is an independent publisher and content owner. And Allen Press is, is now accurately identified as a service provider. We'd had several of these things go back and forth over the past um, I don't know, decade or so, uh, during 2000, yeah, 2012 when we started, where it was listed in different, uh, different sections um, that, that didn't necessarily ref reflect reality of, of how it was set up. Um, we also have, with, with these increases in, in availability and um, in sort of technical capability, we are able to now pursue applications for other indexing ser services um, like Medline and Google Scholar, which we'll be moving forward on. Um, we still have a couple of internal things that we have to resolve with how information is made available when they um, look, when they crawl this, this data, um, which, we're, which we're currently working on right now with Allen Press. Next slide, please. Um, so our content has been, you know, pretty pretty stable with what we're offering. Um, we have we we're, we are still working to increase submission for original content um, with more better sort of consistent um, advertising and 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 mentioning those things and trying to share those with colleagues. This is a space where I think we have overlap with potentially with marketing to try to drive uh, marketing and membership to try to drive people to the site. One of the things that we've heard from feedback. Uh, particularly from some of our international partners was well we need it to be indexed so that we can get the appropriate ap academic credit for it and that's so that's been a big push uh, for us there uh, next slide so in this next year uh, we plan to you know with the updated uh, publisher information uh, and expanded searchability of article identifiers um, we're, you know we're really expecting that we'll be able to move forward uh, hopefully in a more timely manner now with some of the indexing projects uh, and we will also uh, be able to increase you know that will help us increase submission of research and we're looking uh, we, we this we already did this but we will be adding some additional members expand uh, publication committee with um, with some uh, with some additional members um, as we've as we've had some of these agreements um, go through so um, we'll be looking for for some additional input there. So if you, if you're interested or or uh, know of anybody, please uh, let me know. And I would you know like to thank uh, John Ehrman and the section editors and reviewers uh, for um, for you know all the effort they put in. And I, I'd also like to thank 
thank Paul Gallo. We, he did some video work and, and helped us do some really cool stuff there, which which has been um, really a, a cool expansion of, of what we've done. And, and that all all that stuff went final this last year. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, it, it certainly wouldn't be possible without you. All right. Next. Thanks. That's it. I think we're done, right? Okay, so before I, I talk, thank you so much, Webb. Um, excited for uh, the journal and its growth. Um, before I move on to legislative, I'm gonna go back to Tim. Um, so let me just reverse the slides. Um, so we can do the budget, which is a really big section that I wanna make sure we don't go too in deep into this. Oops. Okay, Tim. All right, so hopefully everyone can hear me here. Uh, so uh, first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna talk about the uh, revenue of uh, 2021. You can see that the uh, uh, revenue budgeted that we had was 41 plus, and we came out ahead with a total of 47, almost $48,000 uh, there. Now, uh, this was in part because of the membership increase in membership. We exceeded membership revenue by about, you know, 4,700. We also increased our conference revenue by about um, 1,100, and uh, the the uh, the webinars were, uh, almost about a thousand dollars there. But we did fall short on some of the sponsors. We lost a sponsor, and uh, and, and some of our projections for the uh, JSEP. Uh, the uh, subscriptions went down a little bit. Uh, and so we exceeded uh, the, uh, the, the 2021 revenue by about $6,385. Next slide, please. All right, so now into the expenses. Uh, we did budget an expense of uh, $43,411 and total expenses were just below that, uh, which is good news. So. Uh, just shy of uh, forty-three thousand uh, dollars there, and again, uh, the, the the budgeted funds that we uh, uh, allocated for expense were to go to uh, for supporting staff, uh, communications, the, uh, the the conference, of course, and we even have some expenses for photography, which we did not use. All right, so we look at the uh, the end total here. Uh, you can see that uh, the, the overall budget versus uh, the actuals, the, the, the 2021 budget versus the uh, 2021 year end totals. Um, we were, we actually <clears throat> budgeted that we were going to uh, lose some money, but we actually came out ahead. Um, and that advanced our available balance to about $71,000. Now, all together with uh, everything added from the marketing fund, legislation funds, uh, we were sitting at about $92,408 at the end of uh, 2021. Next slide, please. All right, so now talking about 2022, uh, we are budgeting a uh, total revenue of $44,000. $100. And we, uh, most of this increase is going to, we project that there'll be a, a greater amount of memberships, both professional and student. Uh, but we also uh, project that we'll probably maintain the webinars as we did in uh, 2021. And we also um, are predicting, if you will, uh, the um, uh, similar turnout to the, the regional conference and uh, JSEP subscriptions and sponsorships. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of expenses, we're budgeting that uh, we'll have a uh, total expense around uh, $44,000, so just below our expected revenues. <clears throat> and this is, uh, of course, uh, a lot of the expenses are going to come from the conference for marketing and legislation uh, efforts. And of course, a big chunk of this is always going to come from publications. Um, we also have a um, the, the, the Continue Ed Committee uh, is putting together a proposal for a new virtual communication system. Um, so that will obviously cause some expense as well. Which one that we've chosen, I'm not really sure, but we had a couple ideas, but all were gonna be somewhat um, um, expensive. So 
Uh, next slide. Getting into the the, the final. This is uh, this is just projections for 2022. Uh, looking at what we think we're going to be spending versus how much we're going to be making. Uh, we are projecting that we'll have a net income of about $29. Again, these are just projections. Uh, looking at our crystal ball. Um, uh, for for the most part, we've always uh, been above those expectations, um, and we'll grow our our pot, so to speak, by about uh, two or three thousand dollars. So we're projecting total assets at the end of uh, 2022 to be around ninety five thousand um, uh, four hundred and thirty seven dollars. And I believe that's it. Yeah. Are Thank there you. Any questions. I don't see anything in the chat, but if you do as we go along, Tim uh, will be here to help us navigate questions you may have in the budget. Thank you so much, Tim. Um, I'm going to pass it over to um, Jamal, I think is where we left off. With the legislative, let's, there we go. So thank you, Laura. Um, I want to first start off by recognizing all the committee members in, in the legislative committee. This is a group of extremely passionate individuals that um, have dedicated a lot of their time and expertise within this area. So what we had accomplished this past year could not have been possible with, without the help of these committee members. So I'm greatly appreciative of, of everyone's um, assistance and time with this committee. Some of the highlights from this past year. Uh, I'll start off with the ACSM Sports Medicine uh, Bulletin uh, highlighted section that we had that, that discussed the importance of professionalization and provided information on the steps that the ACSM task force is taking, as well as how CEPA and the CEPA membership are facilitating some of those, um, those efforts. If you haven't had a chance to read that, I encourage you to look at the edition from January 11th, uh, 2022, to be able to get a good synopsis of what's happening within those efforts. Um, can you go ahead and advance, Laura? And there are going to be a few more animations, so feel free to populate all of those. Um, so as I mentioned, a lot of our work is in collaboration with ACSM's Reimbursement Task Force, and uh, we have a few different subcommittees as a part of that task force. Uh, one, in, uh, one in which we, we are um, providing a lot of assistance is the research committee. So this is the committee or subcommittee that is looking at the evidence that is available to identify areas that we either have a lot of information so that we can use that to present a strong case for the professionalization of the CEP and looking for areas of weakness. And so Whitney Quast and, and um, Matt Thomas have been uh, highly active from the legislative committee within the subcommittee to help accumulate some of that data and look for areas of, of greater attention. Um, the other efforts that we've been working on is promoting programmatic accreditation. This is a key piece to the strategy the task force is using to become a qualified healthcare provider. And we created a, um, a survey that was sent out to a number of CEP and EP programs across the nation. And through that process, we were able to communicate with a number of program leaders that either had not heard about the latest um, uh, requirements for programs to be accredited by 2027 in order for their students to sit for the ACSM CEP uh, certification exam. And through that, we were able to help facilitate the, uh, the process of getting these programs accredited. And then we also have a, another subgroup uh, of members that are a part of the CEP practice patterns um, uh, uh, committee where we're trying to identify areas where CEPs are practicing and how they are utilizing their skill set in those clinical settings. This is going to be a huge resource and effort that's going to be contributing to providing material to the task force to be used in the legislative setting. Um, and we are making great progress with this. For the coming year, I'm very excited to announce that Brittany Overstreet uh, is gonna be taking over as chair. This, she is just an incredible person, emerging leader, if not a leader already within our field. Um, and she is a member of the reimbursement task force. 
So she's just going to be the ideal um, person to take over the legislative committee and help advance some of our initiatives as well as the professionalization efforts. Um, so she'll have a number of initiatives that she'll be starting here in the next month. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with her closely and then seeing all the great uh, advancements that she makes over this next year. And that is all. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, Jamal. Um, next on our agenda is marketing. Um, and so let me get the marketing slides up. Sharit, oh, I, I fibbed. It is not marketing. It is career resources. I messed up on my notes on my desk. So I'm going to pass the microphone over to Garrett. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lord. Thanks, everyone, for, for signing in today. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, a little bit about the Career Resources Committee. Uh, I've been chair of the committee for the past several years, and just recently we added Dave Verrill as well, a past EPA president, onto the committee. And as you can see, this is just a little plug to get involved with different committees. We are a committee of two, and so we're always looking for fresh ideas, new members. Uh, there's volunteer forms built within the CEPA website. So if, if any of the committees that you've been hearing from today uh, sound exciting to you, if any of them align with your passions, go ahead and volunteer, put your name out there to, to be involved. I think a, a great benefit of uh, CEPA in a relatively small organization is the ability to get involved, get some leadership experience, uh, get some networking in as well, whether it's a student, young professional, any point in your career. Um, but a little bit about myself, I am a, a clinical research manager working at Northwestern University and having gone uh, more of a research route post-graduation as opposed to more traditional clinical route uh, in a cardiac or pulmonary rehab setting, I think I definitely appreciate uh, the value of really understanding the different diversity of careers available within the field of clinical exercise physiology. And so historically, that's been the role of this committee has been to field questions from young professionals, from students, looking to expand, you know, understand what opportunities are out there in different settings. Um, and so uh, historically, we've fielded questions that have come in. Uh, emails have gone in through the central CEPA intake email. We've helped answer questions about uh, different opportunities, internships, how to how to get some networking done, things like that. But in the last year or so, exciting initiatives have been to be a bit more proactive in helping push out opportunities through the CEPA membership for different careers in the field. And so we started what's known as the CEPA Job Share. That is a member resource built within the website. And so if you do a little bit, little bit of exploring in the website uh, under the Benefits tab, you'll be able to see that a CEPA uh, Job Share uh, submission link exists. What you'll be able to do is fill out uh, a Google form that gets pushed to me. We screen that to make sure that we have contact information, we have starting date information, we have information to uh, uh, assure that it is clinical exercise physiology specific. That then gets sent to our marketing team and with a really innovative collaboration, we're able to push that out through our different social media platforms. So these posts, you might have seen them on our different social media platforms. Things like internships, graduate assistantships, different clinical positions that have been opened will find their way onto Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, those types of things. And so in addition to the benefit of being able to hear about those openings from CEPA uh, centrally, you also have the benefit of being able to promote your own openings. So if you're working in a setting that is looking for highly qualified uh, clinical exercise physiologists, whether it's a teaching position, clinical position, research position, or something else related to clinical ex-phys, by all means, leverage that resource and go ahead and push some, some information our way. We'll help promote it for you as well. But we, over the past year, have had about 25 different posts come through. It's been met with great enthusiasm, met really uh, positive feedback from our members to be able to be a bit more in tune with, with specifically screened positions that have come through the pipe. So super excited about that uh, initiative that way. Uh, and secondarily, we have the CEPA Ambassadors Program. We historically, and I've been involved highly with the Midwest ACSM regional meeting, but we're really trying to uh, improve CEPA's pr uh, um, presence at different regional meetings throughout ACSM as well. So uh, Laura has been super proactive in meeting with regional huddles, different regional leaders, and we've been begin to build these bridges at different regional meetings to have a CEPA presence that has taken the form over the last year or so largely with uh, online virtual platforms. So we're able to send representatives that are uh, highlight the diversity of professions within CEPA. Uh, we've had researchers, uh, academics, clinicians show up to these meetings and help interact with students, with uh, you know different young professionals to help uh, explore what opportunities are available. And we, uh, as of this fall, have started the ambassadors program where since meetings are coming back in person, we have uh, a good opportunity to send some regional CEPA members to those regional ACSM meetings and advocate on behalf of CEPA. So share the opportunities available 
um, within the benefits available within CPA, the journal, all the things we've talked about, and help expand our presence uh, to different regions across the country as well. So that's something that as more and more CEP, uh, regional ACSM meetings come back in person, we'll be contacting different CEPA members regionally to help identify folks that might want to advocate on behalf of the organization. So super exciting. But once again, if you're interested in any of these initiatives or different committees that you've heard about, feel free to reach out via that volunteer form and hopefully uh, look forward to interacting with some of you moving forward. But that's all I got. Thanks so much, Garrett. Thanks. Um, next is marketing. As I mentioned, Sharit had a conflict. Um, Sharit is just chair, uh, the chair of the um, committee with two very active members, um, Ron and Kimberly. This, these are the people behind the scenes that are helping to create the posts you see on social media. So Sharit has prepared these slides. So accomplishments have been working closely with Garrett in the um, career resources as ourselves and the president panel to help understand how do we want to adequately promote who we are as an organization, help with job shares. We've also done a couple of internship shares. So institutions looking for graduate students. Um, so a lot of this is just collecting the information and being able to and put it through Garrett and then the marketing team is making it look good and making it read well. So really promoting the job shares on social media, um, the, all of our social media platforms, as well as the member spotlights, which they hope in the, over the summer to find some of our incredible CEPA members like all of you guys here on the Zoom with us and highlight who we are. Uh, where you can find our marketing work being done, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube page. All of these have platforms that are active and live with things that are being pushed. Um, the marketing committee plans to work with all of the other committees to understand how to best keep our members informed. So as we move into this next year, the goal that the marketing committee has is to leverage communication with the other committees to help share what's going on, as Jamal mentioned in legislative or with the regional members that Garrett mentioned in career. Um, there's also was a social media collaboration between the um, Journal of Clinical Exercise Physiology, so our CEPA's JSEP journal, as well as with the Journal of Cardiopulmonary Rehabilitation and Prevention, so JCRP. And this collaboration is a very commonly found social media push among businesses and kind of within industry to try to get followers engaged. And I think it worked really well. I think there's another one up the pipeline coming where if you notice, if you're on any, um, it was on Twitter that you follow and repost. And then there was the drawing that they got, um, the winner got a free subscription to um, either a membership to our CEPA to access JSEP or the JCRP. So we hope to do more collaborations like that to really help increase awareness and in followers. Uh, because again, as I mentioned at the top of the meeting, we have many people in the field that are not quite aware that we exist. And I think that's a really important way to try to find ways to leverage and connect with others. So that's a, a, an ongoing social media collaboration. The other big news in the world of marketing is now CEPA has access to Canva, which um, those of you in marketing and social media world, it is an incredible uh, website platform. I'm not too sure the language to use that they're learning um, to all of the features to help make innovative posts. So that's kind of the marketing behind. Of course, none of us went to school for marketing and Shree would say the same thing. So it's a learning curve trying to figure out how to, how to use all of that. But having Canva um, as a nonprofit, we're able to get a nonprofit uh, account created this past year. And that has really helped vamp up what mark the marketing committee is able to do. So their future goals, as I, as I mentioned earlier, to start spotlighting members and help um, increase who we all are and share the different jobs and backgrounds we come from, collaborate with the other committees to help share more information so our members are more involved um, in the know or knowledgeable about what's going on in the trenches with the work that a lot of these projects are going on on committees, um, awareness on social media, just awareness of who CEPA is and who is the CEP, the actual practitioner, um, and really wanting to start using the YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel is where this recording will end up. So that's the marketing um, kind of update from uh, the committee of three, which again, anyone who's looking to get involved, we all have room for you. 
Next on the list is the registry. And we have Sandy who is here on the call to give us an update on what's going on in the CEPA registry. Hi, Laura, can you hear me? We can, thanks. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so I'm on the uh, registry committee with the two chairs, Dennis Kerrigan and Brian Coyne. Um, we currently have 1,008 in the registry. Um, we usually have a, well, this past year we had 20 applicants that, who met the requirement um, to be admitted to this, but we typically get two to four or five um, applicants per month. Um, we do meet on a monthly Zoom call to review these applicants together and decide if they've met all the requirements. We send out the letter. If they haven't met all the requirements, we follow up with them and sort of guide them in what steps um, to take next um, and complete so that they could be admitted. Um, just as a review, as of last year, we had 1,097 um, people in the registry. And at quick glance, that just looks like I'm really bad at math. Um, but I wanted to tell you that um, we had went back through the registry and sort of pulled out all the um, people who were in this group that had not kept up with their certifications, which was something we hadn't done since before COVID. So there were um, sort of a batch of people that had not kept their certifications current. Um, we reached out to them to if we had a good contact information to see if that um, if they were interested in renewing and some were and some weren't. So our numbers are a little bit down, but we do we did take 20 new people over the last year. That's all I have. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank, thanks. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Sandy. Um, next, I believe, is a strategic plan with Aaron. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, thanks. Yep. Thank, thanks, Laura. Um, this meeting is just a, a great way to see like everything we've accomplished for the year. We do these monthly meetings, but um, sometimes we kind of miss even within our own internal group, like the amount of work that such a small group of people are doing. And it's kind of exciting. Um, the strategic plan is in its third iteration. Um, 10 years ago, CEPA started uh, to develop a strategic plan with Kathleen K. Hill as our chair. And, and we pretty much listed everything under the sun that we wanted to accomplish. And we set this five-year goal um, and then in five years, we edited it a little bit and then moved forward. And so this third session here, we wanted to get a little more laser focused on what we were really trying to do and to shorten the time frame. So we have a, we're in the middle of a three-year strategic plan cycle, the 2021 to 2024. And I want to recognize um, the committee, which our past presidents, Brad Roy, um, Trent Hargens, Clinton Bronner, um, almost president, Jamal, and um, our executive secretary, Wanda Kester. And so we kind of started with a blank slate and, and we're just looking at what we, were, what we were already doing well and what we needed to focus on. And so one of the things that is not on here is the journal and just listening to everything that Webb presented, um, they're doing a phenomenal job of taking this journal, um, expanding readership, uh, indexing it. Um, and we just felt like that was running very well. And so we wanted to focus on what do we need to do in the next three years to really grow this profession to take the next big step. And so we developed these four um, pillars, which were grow the membership, make sure we were financially sound, um, focus on professional development, and then how would we um, want to support our infrastructure for our organization? So under membership growth, we've been hovering around 400 members for the longest time. And we were like at 360 or something about a year and a half ago. And in, in large part to our marketing or our membership marketing, uh, social media group have really um, got the word out. I think that's one thing that we've kind of lacked with when you listen to this 90 minutes of our business meeting, we, we don't get that message out very well. And so I think reaching out 
to our members or potential members um, has, has helped a steady increase in uh, membership. And now we're at 520 is what I just counted from the, um, the slide um, that Mary presented. So um, great work by that committee. Um, taking advantage of not only um, tooting our own horn of what we succeeded, but leveraging the talent of the people that are out there who, who could do this, this work. So um, engaging them with, with um, social media, with the website opportunities. And um, this ballot we had for the, the most recent election is the biggest ballot I've ever seen with really tremendous people on there who, first of all, congratulations to our new committee members, but I think we need to also bring all those other folks um, into CEPA and, and get them active. Um, our financial strength, we've always been pretty sound. Um, we kind of um, had a couple negative years when we really were growing the journal about four or five years ago, um, but we put together pretty sound budgets and just opportunities like having, um, we called it our regional conference, I think, it, could be called our international conference is a big opportunity for um, for income as well as uh, um, institutional subscriptions for JSEP. So I think there's just a lot of opportunities. Some of the things we haven't focused on very well um, is we really need to grow our partnership committee. Um, so these the the one thing that we didn't do after the previous two strategic plans was to keep the chair of the strategic planning committee on the executive committee. And so that's that's been me for the last couple of years, um, but that has really helped us keep our eye on the ball here. Under professional development, um, Jamal just listed a, a number of great things that the legislative committee are working on. Um, and, um, and then with the job opportunities that Garrett's working on. So we're putting our attention on these things, we're staying more focused. And then the, the final pillar, is just as we grow, what do we need in support, both from ACSM and then internally from our executive secretary? And when is it feasible to start um, thinking about an executive director? So this is this is our strategic plan. We're in the middle of it. I think we're making great progress and uh, and great work to everybody. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Um, so, you know, as Aaron said, I think it's an important thing to say thank you to all of those who are rolling out of their positions. Obviously, thank you to all of the volunteers that are serving currently, all of the members that continue to renew their memberships. On the screen here, I have a list of um, who is rolling out of a position. Um, some are going to new positions. Um, some are, you know, going just as committee members. But we've got past president um, Trent, um, Secretary Garrett, two members of large, both Webb and Kristen, um, uh, Trent as uh, the continuing ed. Jamal on legislative, and then membership, Mary. So all of these are rolling off of their service uh, without all of their um, tedious time and effort. We would not have all of these great updates to share with you today. So um, definitely huge thank you to all of you on the, on the slide here. So taking a look at the election results, um, as Aaron mentioned, it was the biggest ballot ever um, in the history of, ACE, of CEPA since 2008. Um, we have the elections comes out to uh, president-elect um, uh, Laura Newsom, Secretary Brittany Overstreet, two members of large, uh, Matthew Thomas and Cassandra Liebman. And what we next need to do is do a, um, well, I, I've done an electronic ballot, so I, I'm going to share that link. But before I do the electronic Ballon, I'm going to ask if we could get a someone to um, motion to certify the election. Move to certify the election. Second. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thanks. So I'm going to just shot, stop sharing because I don't have my dual monitor set up. So I can send you the link um, that I'm going to. Not very. Um, I'm not very graceful at doing this, so apologize for just a second to make sure it goes to everybody. So in your in the chat, you're going to see a link to um, a Google form, 
if um, professional members, we ask only professional members to help us to by voting to certify the, the names on the election ballot. So I'll just give you a few minutes to do that. And it looks like we are getting My Laura, I think that's the wrong link. link. It is. Yeah. I just saw my mouse was frozen, so I could not. You got the link to volunteer. So now you should have the link to the election ballot. And my mouse was frozen, so I apologize. Just when you think you can orchestrate a Zoom call after two years. Okay, so I see the, the ballots are, uh, the responses are coming in, so thank you. I'll just give it a few more moments. Okay. Thank you guys. It looks like it is from the numbers I'm having pretty unanimous out of the 35 that we have here on the on the call. So um, as we wrap up our um, our voting, thank you so much for doing this electronically and for me stumbling through this. So I'd like to uh, formally welcome um, the the bet names in the ballot, which is President Elect. Laura Newsom, um, Secretary Brittany Overstreet, members at large, uh, Matthew Thomas and Cassandra Liebman as new, um, new into their positions. I also will recognize on the other side of the screen our new committee chairs. Um, advocacy is going to be Nicole Coons, membership for Seen Edmonds, legislative, as Jamal mentioned earlier, Brittany Overstreet, and continuing ed is um, Sadie Elkin. So, Congratulations to all of you, and a giant congratulations to our new president, um, passing the gavel over to Jamal, the new president. Before I hand him over the slides, I just want to take a brief moment to thank all of those that went before us. Um, I've been a member since 2008, and um, between 2008 and now, there's been an incredible amount of growth in the organization. So thank you to all of those um, that have served in these positions. And I'm honored to formally, virtually invite uh, Jamal to take over um, as president. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Laura. Um, let's see. I should have control now. Yes. Yes, you should. Okay. Fantastic. So first off. I really want to thank and recognize Laura for all of the work that she has done this past year. Um, Laura, you're a true example of excellence when it comes to leadership. And I think the presentation that we've just seen is a testament to the amount of work and everything that you've put into this organization. Um, and I can compare that to personal experiences when we're looking at, um, you know, when I think back to being a student. And we think of our faculty members of kind of just teaching classes and showing up to work every now and then. And you don't truly appreciate all the work that goes on behind the scenes until you, you are in that position. And over this past year, as immediate or as incoming president, you know, to view you and look at you um, and get a peek behind the curtains and everything that the president has to do is truly impressive. Um, and you are you were just such a shining example. And, I'm so happy to have you staying on and to continue to serve as a mentor. 
uh, for me over this next year. Um, I'm definitely going to leverage all of your experiences and uh, to keep up the momentum that you've generated. And I think because of that, my job is going to be relatively easier because um, we have set such, uh, or you've set such an impressive um, uh, momentum for this organization, not only to, to add on about you serving as chair of the conference planning committee, which is just a huge endeavor in its, on its own, co-authoring the CEP salary survey, being highly involved with the task force and being a part of numerous uh, committees related to that effort. Um, and then I think most important of all, forging a strong partnership with ATSM. This is something that unfortunately in the early beginnings of our organization may not have been as strong as we have liked, but we have made huge strides in this arena. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to continuing that collaborative partnership with ATSM to allow us to move forward as an organization as well as a profession. So a huge thank you um, and congratulations on such a successful year. Thank you, Jamal. Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so to tell everyone a little bit about myself, uh, first professionally, I'm a clinical associate professor at um, UIC. And yes, it's within the Department of Physical Therapy, although I'm a clinical exercise physiologist. I'm fortunate to work in a multidisciplinary department who appreciates um, anyone that implements uh, healthy living initiatives in, in patients that benefit from those initiatives. And um, I also wear a couple of other hats, both clinically research as well as, as uh, education. So I'm the director of the Cardiac Rehabilitation Program, director of the newly developed Professional Doctor of Clinical Exercise Physiology Program. Um, and my research interests tend to, to focus on um, identifying the benefits, or at least the cardiovascular benefits of exercise in patients with chronic health conditions but also looking at implement, physical activity implement, implementation techniques across um, uh, populations with chronic health conditions. I've been um, quite active in various professional organizations, so a few highlights through the ACSM. Uh, I currently serve as the associate editor of ACSM's Clinical Exercise Physiology Textbook for the second edition. I am uh, or was a chapter author of ACSM's resources for the personal trainer, that was led by uh, Trent Hargens. I co-led the effort to establish the ACSM Clinical Exercise Physiologist Certification Prep Course, um, and it will be uh, co-leading an, an additional effort that's aimed at um, helping physicians prescribe exercise as well as work with patients within their clinics. Um, I've served in the Exercises Medicine Older Adults Committee for the past six years, um, both as a member as well as a chair and um, have also been active in AACBPR, serving on uh, numerous conference-related um, uh, organizations or committees, such as the Research Committee, as well as the Program Planning Committee. The EPA has been a huge part of my kind of growth as a professional. I joined in uh, 2010 and served as the student representative. Uh, then was able to move and work with the Legislative Committee, ultimately becoming chair, um, have served with the Strategic Planning Committee, as well as member at large, um, and I'm currently the Associate Editor of the Journal of Clinical Exercise Physiology. So since 2010, we have certainly come a long way as an organization, and it's been extremely exciting to see the uh, momentum we've generated, as well as the progress that we've developed. But I think from my personal opinion, the most impressive and I think the a testament to everyone's efforts is the, the growing uh, um, interest in being a part of the EPA and helping move these initiatives through the various um, committees. As far as my goals uh, during my presidential year, the, uh, the main goal is to obviously advance the profession as well as the professional. The way in which I hope to accomplish this is by spearheading an effort to recognize those members that have dedicated a number of years and hours uh, towards this organization and what we, what we um, believe to be extremely important for, our, for the future of our profession by creating a fellowship program that is commonly available through larger organizations such as ACSM, AACDPR, AHA, and I think this is one way in which we can recognize that contribution, as well as 
uh, as well as identify individuals that are still interested in being active, even after serving as presidents or committee chairs, um, to make sure that we still have a large group of individuals that we can regularly call upon to help various efforts through, um, through the future of this organization. One area in which these fellows can help would be to help establish uh, a mentorship program to students in professional development. We have a number of individuals that are national and international leaders within their field and have a wealth of experience that can be leveraged to help the students or the professional advance in their own careers and in turn give back to CEPA as well as the profession. One area in which that I think we're ready to contribute is developing um, CEPA guidelines as well as statements. And this, is, this would be ideal timing given the efforts that are being spearheaded with the ACSM Reimbursement Task Force. It's become quite evident that there are uh, limited documents and data to demonstrate what a CEP does outside of cardiac and pulmonary rehab. To us, it makes sense. We know exactly what we do. And, we know all the various areas that we practice, but unfortunately many professionals, physicians, um, legislators have no idea what we do. And we do not have guideline statements that we can fall back on to provide evidence and literature to support some of the claims that we make. And then lastly, um, to support the national and international professionalization efforts. We've mentioned the ACSM and I've mentioned the ACSM Reimbursement Task Force numerous times during the past hour, but there are also initiatives that are happening in other countries. There have been incredible strides that have been made by the Australians in uh, recognizing the professionalization of CEPs. The uh, UK has taken major strides. Canada, as well as New Zealand, have identified uh, specific goals to ensure that patients can work with exercise physiologists or clinical exercise physiologists and bill for those various services um, to make sure that a nation can benefit from all the quality services that a CEP can provide. And I'd like to keep it brief to the point so that we can allow plenty of time for um, any questions for new business or have an open discussion. But I'd also like to make um, a special request to anyone that has not become involved in CEPA to consider doing so. Um, this is a fantastic organization that, again, has come a long way, has generated a lot of momentum, and has uh, a pretty impressive platform when it comes to collaborations with other countries as well as larger organizations in the U.S. Uh, additionally, if you are a young, um, young professional in an academic um, position, this would be a great way to boost your CV and to, to qualify to become recognized as a fellow of CEPA when that becomes available. And so all of those look really great on a CV and it matters a lot when it comes to uh, a tenure track position. So if it is just purely from a, um, uh, a personal advancement uh, type of reason, that's okay because we can certainly use all the help um, that we can get because we have so many initiatives that we're starting um, and have such high quality people to pull from. So with that, I'd like to open it up for any questions or discussion items as um, so that we can round out the, this business meeting. Yes, Sam. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you, Jamal, um, on being president, but I'd also like to congratulate Laura and all the other committee members who have been doing such a, a wonderful job. Um, I, I'm so happy to hear. I, I, I love what I'm seeing. I, I really, really do. Um, the, the only thing that I am, I'm a bit sobered about is that in our program here on the East Coast, I'm seeing that we are losing, I'm losing students to other professions. Um, students who obviously are uh, strong academically are not being attracted to the CEP field because they will get more money someplace else. <laughs> so that's something that, to be honest with you, is a concern that I have. Um, I have a situation, I can, I can keep going, but my concern is that 
I think that some of the things that we're doing are exactly what we need to do. The reimbursement is really important. So everything that you're doing, I just want to say, continue doing. Um, we just need this to be done soon because we are losing people. At least I'm, I'm seeing it from where I am working. Mm -hmm. But I just want to congratulate everybody and thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you so much, Sam. And I think you make such an important point. And this is something that we've seen not just this past year, but for numerous a number of years, we've we've all had conversations with students that have gone down the path of CEP and then realized that they've either hit a ceiling that in their training or they want to make more money and they tend to go either towards a PT or a nursing route. Um, and you know that's obviously salary is nothing that we can change this next year or the next couple of years. Um, however, we can grow the recognition of all the great things the CEP can do. And we're fortunate to have Nicole Kuntz, who's gonna be taking over as chair of the advocacy committee. And she's had some really um, uh, interesting and impactful initiatives to help increase the awareness of what a CEP does to other allied health professionals, as well as administrators. I think we can you know, um, talk all we want to students about what a CEP does, but at the end of the day, the student is not gonna create the job. It's the administrators, it's these large organizations that will have to recognize the benefits of a CEP and um, then take the initiative to create these, these, uh, these job opportunities with appropriate compensation. This is a major feat, but I think we're gonna make some great strides in this area and it's certainly recognized. Thank you, Sam. Carol. Hi, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for the amazing work that you've been doing. And, you know, I've pretty much been on the sidelines for a long time, but, you know, for many years prior to that, definitely deep in the, the weeds and, you know, really put my heart and soul into seeing our profession grow. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who's working and, you know, that you're, you're, really have so many great initiatives that really can make a difference. And, you know, finally, you know, after decades of saying to my students, like, oh, you just have to go out there and promote yourself and work hard. But, you know, as Sam said, we just keep seeing students go on to other things. So just, I just want to give my heartfelt thanks to everyone who's just worked so hard and really have accomplished so much. And certainly we have lots more to do, but. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Carol. And it's truly an honor to have you on this call past the ACSM president. Um, and again, I think it's a, a great demonstration of the, the, the distance that the EPA has gone as a group to have a past ACSM president on this call and to continue to advocate for what we do as well as the profession. So thank you so much, Carol, for everything that you've done um, for our profession and continuing to support us. Excellent. Any other comments, questions, feel free to use the chat or uh, you can unmute yourself and then and ask away. All right, I'm not hearing anything else or seeing anything else. So with that, um, we will conclude the our business meeting. I would like to formally ask someone to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved as my last act on the EC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Trent. And can I get a second? I'll second, second. that as a new one coming Fantastic. in. Fantastic. Uh, and all verbally, all in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. 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 Fantastic. Aye. All those opposed? Excellent. So with that, thank you so much, everyone, for your time and commitment to CEPA. Really looking forward to this next year. Um, and looking forward to working with uh, many of you on this call. Thank you. Thanks, Jamal. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jamal. Bye, Trent. <laughs> Bye, Laura. Thanks. <laughs>